Hey guys, this is Pablo with Meditation Amsterdam. And today I am here at one of the little docks in San Marcos La Laguna, small town on the banks of Lake Atitlan. Uh, and um, I wanted to share some thoughts that uh, came up yesterday regarding the situation we're in uh, before we start to do the work of integrating our mind and body in our our different um, the different aspects of our neurophysiology um, and the reason for this is um, that the lens through which we will see the world uh, before we do this is a very fragmented lens which by necessity will therefore um, have us come up with very um, biased or very uh, skewed conclusions about the ways things work so um, we'll, we'll be um, we'll be seeing things in an incorrect way and uh, there's not much we can do about it other than doing the work as opposed to trying to change our opinion uh, or uh, pretend that we understand deep spiritual truths when we hear them uh, even though we might understand them on a logical level it, it still doesn't count for much so um, <clears throat> uh, one of the uh, one of the things that the ego uh, or our uh, egoic um, identification does is see the mind sort of splits itself into functional parts as part of our uh, development when we're in in, uh, in infancy this is a necessary step so this the splitting of the mind into um, all these little functional bits I'm gonna stand up because there's too many mosquitoes here near the floor um, and so this this splitting creates the illusion um, that things are uh, separate from each other and that they need to somehow be um, brought brought together from the outside, so to speak. Um, I can't qu quite remember the name of the author, but there was somebody who spoke of a, about an explicit order and an implicit order. And so what we're talking here about is our implicit order is fragmented. And we're trying to then piece things back together explicitly, which can't be done. Uh, one classic example of this is uh, th this notion of uh, trying to come up with the, the, the unified theory of everything, for example. Right? So uh, leave it to the, to the ego or, or to the fragmented mind to first break itself into pieces and then due to that see the world as broken and try to come up with a theory that brings it all back together right uh, you can you can see the problem there it's it's like well let me let me first break Humpty Dumpty uh, into pieces and then somehow by hook or by hook or by crook I'll try to you know I'll try to somehow uh, piece it together through a, a theory which by necessity is going to come up with with methodological impossibilities and it's, it's going to come up with circular references or what to, to the logical mind appears as a completely circular reference it's just it just can't be done so um, the ego through its fragmentation sees the world as fragmented and is desperately trying to unify it but it's it's not considering its own fragmentation as part of the um, as the fundamental uh, problem um, <clears throat> This leads me to another uh, interesting uh, thing that the ego does, which is um, because it feels separate, it, it feels lack of integrity and therefore lack of love. It, it feels like it's alone and it longs for um, a, a kind of unconditional loving embrace. 
which is nothing other than it's that finding its own unity and its own uh, uh, um, being. Uh, but because it's just a mental function, it can't really find that. So what it'll start to do, uh, <clears throat> you can see all these boats going by in the background because um, there's not that many roads connecting towns together in this lake. So um, people travel mostly by boat. It's 6.30 in the morning and everybody's already going around. So, so what the eagle will try to do is... Um, Equally, um, equally strange as uh, in, in, in the example I just mentioned, um, it'll try to manufacture conditions which it believes will lead to unconditional love. Yeah, it, it believes that it can somehow um, make itself into a lovable enough object and um and that that way uh other objects will um direct love towards it uh, the ego doesn't understand that actual love what we uh, what we normally mean by love uh, you know a bunch of emotions and and attachments are actually egoic in nature that that's not really love but just really just attachment and emotionality that real love is the absence of the subject-object distinction. Is the absence of difference. Yeah, is, is, is not separating things that are one, fundamentally one. Yeah, so you can see that once again, the fragmentation is the thing that is like playing this trick, right? So it goes, well, I feel separate. I don't feel loved. How, what conditions do I, do I, what boxes do I need to tick for unconditional love to arise? Which is, of course, a ridiculous question, right? Unconditional love doesn't require conditions, but it does require the absence of separation because that's what it is. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the, the fragmented state of the mind only already uh, implies that the answer needs to come from that fragmentation, so it can't be um, it can't be solved on that level. It needs to be an attempt towards unification and surrender, um, and the the ceasing to seek for conditions. That ceasing to seek for conditions allows things to once again coalesce into the unity uh, that is already prevailing. In other words, it, it, it allows the unity of things to be realized or recognized as opposed to created uh, by the ego. And speaking of creation, uh, here's another interesting egoic trap, which is the notion that because the ego creates a separate sense of self um, and a separate sense of other, so self and other being separate, it believes that it needs to create things out of whole cloth. Yeah, it, it, it believes it needs to somehow be the hero in the story that makes it happen. Whether it is finding love, uh, creating success, uh, or, you know, God forbid, um, uh, attaining enlightenment. Uh, the ego believes that it, it's its own individual um, uh, separate efforts are, um, the, you know, the, the one factor uh, in the equation. And um, once again, this is this is a is a categorical mistake that is not so much the ego um, being stupid or trying to get things wrong. It's simply the fact that the mind is fragmented, so it has no choice but to see things this way, um, which is the worrisome part, really. But um, so the ego will will create uh, notions such as, you know, how can I, once again, out of whole cloth. By right, taking no input whatsoever from from you know the way you feel about things or your environment, come up with a plan for my life. Right, it'll start to make lists or things that I like or whatever. You know, how can I, out of whole cloth, uh, feel like I'm uh, like I have broken free from my parental uh, influence? And it'll start to act uh, in the very opposite way that that your parents did uh, when they were raising you, for example. Not noticing that that very action is a validating 
action towards um, uh, that influence, right? It's still revolving around that influence, only in the opposite direction. It, it'll start to do all these really silly things to prove to itself that it can, out of whole cloth, do stuff. That it is isolated, not influenced by its environment, by its, uh, but by the very genetics of the body that it inhabits, uh, and so on. Um, so it's once again an attempt to really do things in isolation. Uh, part of um, the reason that the hero archetype must be transcended is this. The hero archetype in, in Jungian psychology is not the highest archetype there is. I do, we, we think that the hero archetype is like, oh yeah, you, you managed to, like, you unlock the hero. Uh, hero archetype is recognized as the highest of the juvenile archetypes. The child that believes that it can go out there and be somebody, right? Um, all through its own efforts and, uh, um, you know, uh, with, with grit and determination and grinding your teeth, you were the one who made it happen out of nowhere. Uh, it's a childish um, and, and, and a puerile um, uh, way of seeing things. So uh, those are some of the traps. And what's worrisome for me um, while I was um, uh, considering all this is just how little we can trust our own mind so long as it's frag fragmented. We can, I mean, you, can, you, you may almost assume that you cannot trust the damn thing you think, <laughs> right? Which is a very, um, it's almost an untenable way to live to say like, well, I suppose everything that's coming up in the mind is just that complete nonsense, which it is. As a matter of fact, it is. Um, this is, when I, when I work with people, this is a bitter pill to swallow. It, it needs to be, you, um, examples need to be given. You need to just, just, uh, try to broader there and, and your own perspective. I try, I try to do that with myself all the time. So I've come up, I've come to the point where not a single thing my mind spews out is is really uh, granted any credence. Um, at least not in, a, in an unevaluated uh, way. Because it's all just complete nonsense. As, so long as there's a thought, there is a subject and object divide. It's as simple as that. So long as there's a thought, there's a there's a me that believes itself to be alone, to, to, that, that believes that by being a hero, it can, you know, surmount obstacles and procure itself the love that it feels it lacks. Uh, whilst at the at the very same time, that me, that self, is the very problem at hand because it's a it's an outgrowth of fragmentation. Um, and it also means that you know making these kind of videos can sometimes be a complete um, a complete waste of time actually because. I, I might be sometimes uh, speaking through that egoic mind and uh, many of you guys listening will be listening through that filter as well, which means it's not really getting through. Um, it's, um, it might be getting through and you might be having insights on a mental level going, oh my God, that makes so much sense. But the, really the question is at the end of the day, who is that apparent self that is listening? And, and so long as that apparent I get it, as so long as the apparent I who gets it is there, uh, the fragmentation is as present as it, as it was before the, in, the, the supposed insight arose. Yeah. So um, what to do about it uh, is, is to simply do the work. It's, it's to do work that is psychosomatic and integrative in nature and that completely, completely bypasses any kind of logic or egoic... Um, uh, activity in the mind because so long as it's about talking um, it's, it's, it, it might help guide and inform the process but it is not the actual unfoldment of the process that that um, that logical uh, tendency to solve it on that level needs to be utterly bypassed so when you do things like breath work or you, when you do you know body scanning for example or, or Tai Chi uh, yoga uh, exercises or, or meditation proper all these things are meant not to, um, they can be informed by the logical mind and the egoic uh, sense of self, but they are, uh, they are undermining it at the same time and bypassing it altogether. You cannot think your way out of this problem. Anything that has to do with thought is faulty by definition, um, but there are, some thoughts are worse than others, definitely, 
and, uh, and some thoughts can be informative and they can uh, put your practice into the right context and invite you to keep um, cultivating so that the ego structure can be completely uh, undermined from the root. So uh, <clears throat> that's today's thought. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you uh, like the view here at Lake Atitlan. It's as usual, just a gorgeous, gorgeous morning here. Um, I love it here, really. So thanks for listening and I'll be back with more videos pretty soon. Don't like, uh, don't uh, forget to, um, to comment, like and share and um, see you next time. Cheerio.